Hi everybody, hope you're okay. If you have chosen Maths Challenges Set 1, this week you'll be doing some work on decimals. Um, session 4 is all around comparing and, order de comparing and ordering decimals, so I thought I would put this video together to give you a little helping hand. So if you look at my screen at the moment, I have got a very large number on the screen, 1,342,365.1427. That is a decimal number, you can see the decimal point there, and then there are digits after the decimal number. And it shows you the place value of each of those digits, which I really like. So this one here that I'm circling, the digit is a one, it represents one million. This three here, the digit is a three, but it represents 300,000. See if you can pause the video and just work through, pick out a digit, tell me the digit, and then tell me its value in the number. So one more example would be this six here. The digit is a six, it has the value of 60. It represents 60 because it is in the tens column. So see if you can do that with the rest of the numbers there. Just press pause and when you're ready, restart and you can carry on with me. Okay, so comparing and ordering decimals. So on the right hand side of my screen here, I've got three decimals, 4.25, 4.49 and 4.5 and we are going to um, order them from um, the smallest number to the greatest number. We're going to use this place value chart here to help us do that and then we're going to answer this question at the end of which is the greater number. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is just show you how to put it into this place value chart. Okay, so my first number here is 4.25. We can see here I've got a decimal point and it's represented here on my chart. Now, we, we, I like to call them lazy decimal points because they never move. The digit before the decimal point is a 4, so I'm going to put that there. And the digits after the decimal point are a 2 and then a 5, so I'm going to put that here in my place value chart. So this means my digit, the 4 here, has a value of 4. It's in the 1s column. This 4 represents just 4. The digit here is a 2. The digit is a 2. Its value is 2 tenths. And the value of the 5 is 2 hundredths. Okay. Let's put the 4.49 into our place value chart. So I know I've got four ones, decimal point, and then I've got four tenths and nine hundredths. And if I do it with my final number there, I've got four ones, my decimal point, and then I have got a five straight after the decimal point. So that is five tenths. Now you might look at this and think these numbers are slightly different because I've only got one digit out of the decimal point, but you know that's because it would be followed by a zero. But because there's nothing else after it, we don't need to write the zero, we can just erase that. Okay, so there are my three numbers in the place value chart. So now we're going to look at which is the greater number and we're going to try and order them from the smallest to the greatest number. And I can do this by looking at each column individually. Now if I look at my ones column, it doesn't really help me because there's a four in the ones column for each number. So I can order them based on the value of the ones. Go to my decimal point and then I look at my tenths. Now I've got a two, a four and a five there. Two is the lowest number so I know that 4.25 is going to be the smallest number. Then I've got 4.49 and 4.45 left. So then I look and I have got 
a four in the tenths column. So that there must be the number in the middle. Therefore, the greatest number must be 4.5. Now that throws people sometimes because there was nothing in the hundredths column. We know it means that there must be a zero there, but we don't need to write it. So sometimes people think, oh, that must be the smallest number because it's only got one digit after the decimal place. But you can see from my example here that it's just not true. So the greatest number was 4.5. And I can write that here, 4.5. Now, a little easy tip that might help you is when you're working decimals, try and think of it like money. If you're still finding it really difficult, put the pound sign in front. We know if we're writing in money, we're going to need to put a zero in here. We've now got four pounds 25 pence, four pounds 49 pence, or four pounds 50. So which would be the greatest amount? Be four pounds 50. So you know that the greatest number must have been 4.5. I hope that's helpful. A little tip there. Think of it like money. Okay, let's have another go with a couple more numbers here. So we're going to compare and order these decimals here. I've got 1.9, 2.01 and 1.89. So the first thing I'm going to do is put these numbers into my place value chart. So our first one, I've got 1.9. I'm going to put my decimal place in there, my decimal point. Before my decimal point, I have a one. So that must go in the ones column. And after my decimal point, I've got a nine. So there in the tenths column is my nine. The digit is nine. The value is nine tenths. So now I've got 2.01. Put my decimal point there. The digit in front of the decimal point is a two. The digit after the decimal point is a zero, and then I have a one. And last but not least, 1.89, put my decimal point in. The digit before the decimal point is a one. The, digits, the digit after the decimal point is an eight, followed by a nine. So there we go. If I was gonna talk about the value of any of these digits, I'm gonna pick this two here. So the digit is a two, its value is two ones, okay, so its value is just two. If I select this eight here, the digit is an eight, its value is eight tenths. So now I'm going to order these decimals from the smallest to the greatest. So the first thing I need to look at is the, are the numbers in the ones column here. Now I can tell, I can jump ahead, I've got two ones there and I've got a two. So that 2.01 is clearly going to be my greatest number. And then I've just got 1.9 and 1.89 left. Now some people automatically think, oh, 1.9 must be smaller because it hasn't got a number after it, but we know that there would be a zero there. So then we look um, into the tenths column. I've got a nine and I've got an eight. So we could work backwards this time, actually, because we've already got our greatest number in. So let's put the next number that's going to go here. It's going to be our 1.9, which leaves our 1.89 to be the smallest number. 1.89, 1.9, and 2.10. So that means that our greatest number must be 2.01. And if we think of it like money, like I said last time, put my pound sign in front. Have to put the zero in there. Now if we look at it like money, I've got one pound eighty nine, one pound ninety, and two pounds and one pence. So therefore the greatest number must have been two point one zero. I hope that's helped you a bit if you've chosen that set uh, that challenge. Um, if you have any questions, please ask me on the Padlet or feel free to email the school email address and I will get back to you. Hope to see you soon. Bye.